Day trading, it's easy. Talking about why, why day trading is just so easy and the simple secrets behind the idea of why. The technicals, the mechanics, the idea of placing a trade and taking profit and doing all those things. Why it's very, very easy, but, but, there's a big but. There's one thing that plagues everyone. Every day trader, from the beginner to the expert. Well, maybe the experts deny it, but everybody battles this one simple thing. It's emotion. Now, I've talked about emotion a lot, and you're probably like, oh gosh, another video about emotion. Well, this is a little bit different. Talking about actually kind of what is going on with the emotion and how it's actually you know, stopping us from being profitable or being a better day trader, stopping us from being a better day trader. Over the last three years, I've obviously been battling emotion, and we're gonna talk about that here in this video. Today was a perfect example of something I really, I personally need to work on, and I think a lot of people out there will relate to this, and just hopefully we can have a little discussion here on why day trading is easy, but the emotion, the battle of becoming you know, a better day trader is the hard part. Talking about it here in this video right now on the number one day trading channel, so make sure you guys stay tuned. Well, what's going on guys? If you just are now tuning in for the first time ever, welcome to my channel where I talk about day trading, I go live, I have a lot of fun right here. I'm, I'm gonna claim it that this is the number one day trading channel and I know I know you're gonna hit the dislike button because you're going to disagree. But at the end of the day, hey, if I wanna believe that, why can't I believe that? Just like I can believe that one day I might be able to become a millionaire day trader. Now, I'm not actually believing that. Well, I guess I should believe that, but I'm not gonna get my hopes up. But I will talk about the last three years of day trading, the battle that I've been going through and kind of what I'm, what I really need to focus on right now. You know, what I really, I gotta get over, the hump. There's a hump in front of me, right? There's a barrier to success at this point. Going from where I am today to where I wanna be, there's a fine line and it's like, it's right there, right? And I know it's there, I know what I need to do, but I've gotta get over you know, one major issue, and that's obviously emotion, and I've gotta just start trading in a better way. Now, obviously people watch my live streams, they, they see me trading, they see me talking and looking at things, and a lot of times I don't really talk about exactly why I'm entering or why I'm selling or why I'm buying and all that, but today was a really good example of something that happened during the live stream. Bed Bath & Beyond made a move to the upside. It was really overextended on the five minute chart. It was really, really, really just overextended. It was like a dollar. It was a dollar away from any moving average and it was just going straight up for real, for really no reason. And I talked about shorting it and I ended up getting short on Bed Bath Beyond. It ended up pulling back but there was something that I missed out on. There was a little thing, and I'll show you guys here in a second. There was something that I missed out on, and this little thing could have made this trade that much better. And that's one thing that emotion, that emotion stops us from noticing. Now, a lot of times, before we enter trades, we end up kind of getting this idea in our head, right? Where we're like, okay, I'm going to short once it gets to $10.50. Now, the stock price is currently $10.20. You see that there's resistance at 10.50. So you tell yourself, once the stock hits $10.50, I'm going to short. Now, the stock hits $10.50. So, in your in your mind, it makes sense to short, right? You don't focus on anything else other than the idea that the stock is now at $10.50. You don't look at the structure, you don't look at the candles, you don't look at the volume, you're not looking at anything but the idea that now the stock has hit your level of entry. Now, this has happened to me so many times, I can't even, I couldn't count if I tried, where the stock does exactly what I think it's gonna do. It goes to $10.50. But instead of me noticing 
that there's clearly, you know, some bullish pressure. The bottom of the candles have wicks on them. You know, everything's kind of pushing higher. We're overall, you know, overall, we're not super overextended. We've got some support. We're pushing through. You know, something is going on there. And a lot of times I'll end up getting short into that $10.50 area, into that area that I identified as my target to get short or my, you know, my level to get short. It ends up squeezing through $10.50. And what happens? It goes to $10.80. Now, does that mean that I'm wrong about the short? No, it doesn't mean I'm wrong about the short. It just means that I this was a little early, right? It goes to $10.80 and then guess what happens? It pulls back just like I had imagined or just like I had planned for. But the problem is I shorted at $10.50. Now the stock price is $10.80. I got out at the top. I shorted here. I got out up there and now the stock is now back below $10.50. What was I thinking? I identified my entry before we got to that point. Once we got to that point, I basically stopped focusing on anything else on the chart. I was just like, okay, here we go. I'm getting in. Let's go. Let's make some money. And that's the emotion, right? That's the emotion of like, okay, it's, it's happening. I, I got to get in. I got to go. I got to go. Instead of sitting there and being like, hmm, Look at the candles. Look at these candles pushing up to that 1050 area. There's wicks on the bottom of basically all these candles. There's no selling pressure on the tops of these candles. Now, obviously this is going to be different for every trade, for every setup. But one thing that I really I really want to focus on going forward, something that I want to work on, you know, with the emotions is removing that like gratifying idea, you know, that gratifying emotion of like, okay, the stock is now 1050. I was right. It's at the point. And that emotion is now, you know, clouding my judgment where I'm not focusing on what's actually going on with the stock. I'm not focusing on what's happening. I'm just in the moment emotionally connected to that $10 and 50 cent area. So that's something that I really want to focus on going forward. And that's what I'm talking about in this video really is how the mechanics, you know, the mechanics of seeing patterns, seeing breakouts, seeing all these things happening, uh, you know, learning how to day trade. You can learn how to buy low, sell high. You can learn these things. And now one thing a lot of people don't talk about or they do talk about or I don't I don't think they talk about it a lot. But you don't have to always be right. You don't always you don't have to be the most consistent day trader in the world. But what you need to be is a robot in the sense that you cut your losses off quickly, that you take profit, that you basically, you know, continuously do this over and over. That's really what it comes down to. Taking profit, cutting your losers, taking profit, cutting your losers, taking profit, cutting your losers, taking profit, cutting your losers. And then, you know, removing that emotion. One of the things that, you know, I've always had trouble with is removing a lot of that emotion, uh, taking profit or I mean, maybe I, maybe I'm not always, Maybe I don't have a problem with taking profit. A lot of times I take profit early. It does work out sometimes. One thing that I would like to work on as well is once I'm in the green, once I'm, you know, taking profit or, you know, in that green area of thinking about taking profit, I want to focus more on kind of seeing what the stock is doing. You know, are we moving higher? Where, you know, what's the pressure looking like? What's the overall volume looking like? Are the bottom of all these candles that we're breaking out from, are they all showing that there's buyers stepping in at the bottom. Every time the candle pulls back, are we pushing back up with a nice little wick at the bottom? You know, what's going on? You know, I need to be focusing more on what's happening over just being like, you know, uh, we're moving higher. I'm up hundred dollars. It's time to take profit. And that's the emotion. That's the hard part of day trading, you know, trading in general, you know, buying, selling, buying, selling, buying, selling is easy, but removing all that emotion. That's what stops, 99% of people from actually making money as a day trader. It's not that you can't learn how to day trade. It's not that you can't learn how to do these things, you know, seeing these patterns, finding stocks and just the overall idea here. You can learn all of those things. I, I guarantee it that you can learn those things, but can you, can I, can you, can me and you, can we remove that emotion? You know, once we're in the trade, can we, look to take profit at the right time. Can we 
look to cut our losers at the right time? Can we just have a solid plan? Can we adjust our plan? You know, when the stock, like I said, once it's pushing through a certain area, are we picking up on things that are happening in that moment? And that's one thing that I really, personally, I have to work on better. You know, I gotta become better at analyzing in that moment. You know, analyzing the stock in that moment, seeing what's going on, and also, once I realize what's going on or seeing what's going on, being like, okay, okay, maybe I missed that, you know, before I got into the trade, maybe just cut it off here, or asking myself, you know, okay, uh, it's not doing exactly what we wanted. It's at that $10.50 area, but, you know, it's, it's holding support. It's not really pulling back. The volume isn't really looking, you know, too hot right now. And it's pushing through, you know, a lot of stuff's going on in case of becoming a bullish move through this 1050. So those are little things, little things that you learn over time. You know, you're not gonna learn those right away. You're not gonna like read a book and be like, okay, this is how I'll trade. But you're gonna see those little patterns. You're gonna see these setups over and over. At the end of the day, like I said, the trading aspect, you know, learning how to day trade is easy. The hard part is controlling your emotions, controlling your emotions every single day. And I won't lie, it's definitely a grind. It's not, there's no like reward other than the money. There's no reward, you know, if you do good, no one's gonna pat you on the back because the problem is I see a lot of times, I mean, I've done this a lot of times as well, is you're gonna have two or three days where you're gonna be like, okay, you know, I made $100 two or three days in a row. I did good, I had a great three days. And then all of a sudden, you're gonna lose $300. So three days of trading, you lost 300 because number one, maybe you broke your rules, maybe you just got emotional, maybe you tried to overtrade. You know, there's a lot of reasons to why you end up you know, losing money or blowing up your account. Uh, like I've said before, you know, I've had issues with that. I've definitely, uh, you know, battled the emotions and, and tried to become a better day trader. I'm always kind of battling that. And, and you know, three years later, I'm still kind of like hitting that, in that process of trying, you know, trying to become more consistent, trying to just hold back my emotions, trying to be more patient, trying to analyze and learn and just become, you know, overall a better day trader. And it just really comes down to your kind of personal uh, journey. You know, three years later, I'm still battling it. You know, maybe you have no emotions in the first place. I definitely do have a lot of emotions as a person. So that's not the best trait to have as a day trader. But I do believe, you know, going forward, you know, I can focus on little things. I can focus on really just looking for those opportunities and becoming a more consistent, more profitable day trader by looking for these setups over and over. Like I said earlier, I don't always have to be right. You know, I can be wrong basically, what, 50% 50 of the time? I think it's like you can actually be wrong 60% of the time, but as long as your, you know, 40% of your winners are, you know, three or four or five times larger than your losers, well then you're chilling. And that's really what it comes down to. I think a lot of times that emotion, and this also happens a lot too. You have a plan, you're like, okay, I want to I want to do this, I want to buy at this point. You hesitate. The stock does exactly what you kind of planned on, you know, you hesitated. And then all of a sudden, you know, now the stock's kind of pushing up and you're like, ah, ah, and then you kind of get that FOMO and then before you know it, you're buying at the point that was your previous kind of target to sell at from your kind of dip buy. So instead of buying, you know, at $10 where you originally planned on buying, you know, buying the dip, you bought at 1030 and now the stock's pulling back and you get out for a loss. And that happens a lot as well. I do that. I mean, I've done it in the live streams. I know a lot of people out there also do that. They battle with that. So that's one of the really kind of overall hard aspects, you know, having that validation, you know, validating that plan and then kind of getting that confirmation. A lot of times, like I said, you'll, you'll see the stock moving. You'll say, oh, this is a good entry. You hesitate. The stock ends up, you know, doing exactly what you thought it would. And then before you know it, you're like, well, I don't want to miss out. And then you FOMO into it. And then you're getting out for a loss because you end up buying where you originally kind of planned on selling. So again, the idea of trading, you know, that's why 
There's so many times, there's so many times where I can sit on the live stream and I can basically call out stocks all day long. I can be like, well, this is what this is gonna do. You know, this is gonna go here, it's gonna go there, it's gonna do that. And I can do that all day long. Don't get me wrong, like that's, that's easy. I can do that all day. But the problem is, you know, really getting into that, you know, getting into that rhythm where I'm like, okay, I called it, but am I, am I, gonna, am I gonna do it? Am I gonna do that trade? And uh, you know, that's, that's where the emotions come in. The emotions of buying and selling, the emotions of holding a loser or, or cutting a loser off or, or taking profit at the right time and stuff like that. So overall, you know, I'm, I'm getting, I'm moving in the direction that I need to be moving into, you know, uh, overall just kind of handling my losses and that emotion and, and seeing the setups over and over, seeing those setups over and over, definitely you become more and more confident in that over time. Obviously, the more that you see those setups and the more you see them play out in, in, the, in the right way and, and you're able to identify that, you know, seeing that over and over, it becomes, it builds your confidence. You're gonna build your confidence, but that emotion, it's gonna always kind of be there and it's gonna always be hard because you're gonna have days where, like I said, you know, you're gonna make $100 and you're gonna have to make $100 and then all of a sudden you're gonna lose $200 and that emotion is just gonna rush into you and it's gonna fill you, fill you up with emotion because now you're like, I, I traded for two days. You know, I traded for two days here and I just lost two days of trading in one day. And it's gonna happen. There's definitely gonna be days where you're just gonna, you're gonna get smacked, you know, you're gonna get smacked in the face and it's gonna happen and it's just kind of part of the process. But I think uh, you, know, you gotta really understand that at the end of the day, the idea of trading, you know, buying and selling is easy, it's simple, but the human emotional aspect is the hardest part of trading. And you know, we talk about that a lot with these videos and stuff, and I kind of wanted to talk about it a little bit more today because I just that's what I'm thinking about. You know, this whole channel is about what I'm going through as a trader or as a person. So today I went through that, you know, with with Bed Bath and Beyond. I ended up kind of shorting and you know, seeing like, okay, you know, I should have seen this, you know, I should have seen these candles, you know, I should have I should have noticed what was going on there. I ended up shorting just at the wrong time. I need to wait for that confirmation. I need to wait for those, for that big wick on top of the candle. I need to see the, the actual moment before getting short. Even though I had, I had the right idea. You know, I was just a couple minutes late. I'm not trying to like justify what I did, but I'm just trying to reiterate and I'm just venting to you guys on what I need to do better. You know, how, do I get to the next point of this whole journey? You know, for me personally, that that journey really is just kind of learning how to control my emotions and learning how to just really focus on what's going on in that moment and not focusing so much on like, okay, you know, my plan was to do this. Well, you know, I gotta do it. And then it ends up uh, kind of backfiring in my face. So. That's what I'm working on. That's what we're talking about today. Day trading, it's easy, but the emotion, it's the hard part. All right, all right, there it is. If you guys haven't already, do me one big favor, hit that subscribe button. I will talk to you guys later on.